Hey guys, Bear Marks got here at hand. Today I just wanted to talk about a little, oh, a little sad little story about a story of optimism and hope for uh, the future. So, recently I almost made the best find of my uh, entire career doing this, um, the proverbial jackpot. See, I had followed a lot and what, what was in it was a punch bowl. It was a normal old punch bowl. And then there were goblets. Eight, eight goblets. And they were, they had a cut pattern on the base. And this, reflecting back on it, on it, that should have been a, an indicator to, uh, to, uh, at least look into the goblets a little bit more. Now, I sometimes can pinpoint silver from silver plate just by looking at the pictures. Sometimes if you pour at, at the pictures close enough, you can make out little details like the form of the piece or what the piece is, or in some instances, the tarnish pattern of the pieces, because silver can tarnish differently from silver plate, and even silver plate can tarnish differently from from other silver plate, depending on the base metal that they used to plate the pieces. You can also look to see whether or not there's damage to the piece that could indicate a greater percentage that you're looking at silver, because silver is it's more fragile, so it can dent more. So if you're looking at little dents, well, that's probably not going to be the case with plate. But if you're looking at something that's been snapped off, say the lid of a, of a teapot has been completely detached, well, plate is usually stuck with um, onto other pieces by soldering, and that can fail. So if you're looking at damaged pieces that with like a foot or whatever, it's more likely to, to just completely knock off if it's plated than if it's silver. We just try to put a story together with the pieces. Now think about how Goodwill brings in their stuff. You've got millions and millions of, of pounds of, of items that come into the Goodwill facilities, their, their fulfillment centers, whatever, I don't know how they do it, but I just imagine they just have truckload after truckload after truckload of things coming to them. And they only have maybe 30 seconds to look at the piece and decide what, it's, what it is. Whether or not they want to try to put it in their store, whether or not they're going to try to put it online. And then they're trying to figure out what it is and how much they could ask for it. Well, that's why I can find silver in these boxes because they only have so and so much time to uh, identify their silver from their silver plate. And sometimes they will misidentify the piece. They might not know the maker, or maybe the, the marking is kind of faded. So they're just taking a peek at it. And then if they can't see sil sterling in very clear bold letters, then they'll assume that it's silver plate and then it gets sent into a silver plate box. And I can use my knowledge in order to pick that silver out. Now, going back to these, these goblets, I look, I have the gob, the size of the goblet and then the size of the, the punch bowl and those, that's my idea of scale. Now, I might be able to figure out something is silver, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I know how much it weighs. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I know <coughs> whether or not it's, it's a valuable silver or whether or not I could, I'll be lucky to just be able to scrap it at silver prices. Sometimes I know based on the maker but, or what it is, but sometimes I don't. And that's the thing about goblets is that there's a lot of variation in how heavy a goblet can be. I don't know whether to bid on a goblet thinking that it's five ounces and that's a hundred dollars a goblet, or I don't know if, whether or not the goblet is just one one ounce and a half, and that melts for thirty dollars. 
and I don't know whether or not the goblet is in a very desirable pattern. So anyway, I had realized that I was looking at silver goblets. They could barely make out a sterling marking on one of them, so that gave me even a better idea that it was sterling. Well, actually, I knew for sure it was sterling, but I, I had already picked up on it because of the tarnish patterns on the, those goblets. The tarnish, it looked right for sterling silver. So anyway, I ended up being very cheap that day and bidding $225. Now, why did I do that? Well, I, I assumed a $30 goblet melt, okay, at, at least $30 goblet melt, but then I want to make at least $100 profit, $150 profit on a box. That's my ideal for, for my time because it might take me half a day to sort through a box, list it, do the research. So that's kind of where I'm looking at. $400. I want at least $400 worth out of the box. If I'm going to pay $240 for the box, and then you have the cost of shipping, and then the cost of taxes, that's another, like, 50 bucks maybe. So we're at $300, and if the box is worth $400, then I'm going to be able to make $100 off, the, off profit. Now, I'm assuming that the, the punch bowl wasn't that special, so I might be able to get uh, $80, $200 for the punch bowl set. The goblets were the complete, the complete unknown to me, though. I didn't know that if those goblets were worth $30 times 8, that's 240 bucks. I didn't know whether or not they would be worth more than that. So I bid $225 and then if the punch bowl set is, is resellable and I would probably have to sit on it for a long ass time trying to sell that punch bowl set. It might sit around for a year. I have to keep that in consideration. Storage fees, whatever. I only bid a very minimum amount for those goblets due to the reasons above that I'll have to sit on those pieces there's not a whole lot of profit if the goblets don't melt very high assuming that I can I don't, can't resell them well it turned out that these were Rose Point Wallace goblets Rose Point Wallace goblets my, uh, my friend who also helps me out with these auctions and he I also buy some of his plate when he doesn't want it he pointed out to me that oh yeah those were rose point goblets they're worth three hundred dollars to four hundred dollars a piece they could easily sell for two fifty so yeah that's bad I did one two hundred fifty dollars on the lot and it just so happens that that was the price or value of one one of those goblets in that lot. And there were eight of them. So I left $1,700 to, to $3,000 on the table. Like that. Up in smoke. But that's okay, because as long as you're learning from an experience and you don't let it dwell upon you so much, you're going to be fine. It, yes, it stung because it, it was an opportunity that wasn't meant to be, but I did learn a little bit more about the, the actual value of goblets because I had, I now know that I had been underestimating the the potential of a goblet lot. So I'll keep an eye on that from now on. And yeah, even in the very idea that this was even possible, that I had I had pinpointed a situation where I was able to figure out something was valuable. I didn't know how valuable it was, but the the very fact that I realized that it was valuable in the first place 
only one other person was bidding against me, and they probably realized it too. That's the that's the other kind of painful thing. Is it? I don't know how high he would have went to. I don't know whether or not he would have backed off and only bid three hundred. I bid more, and I would have easily gotten it. Or I don't know if he was going to push the the lot up to fifteen hundred and be happy with a five hundred dollar, four hundred dollar profit after he's said and done. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, that was just uh, my little, my little story. Yes, recently, it was the law was about two weeks ago. So uh, the sting isn't as as fresh as it used to be. Yeah, I just don't. I'm not letting it dwell on me very much. It's just time to move on, and I will find other great, other great opportunities. Uh, keep your mind sharp. Keep your eyes open, do your research, keep at it. Um, yeah, if you specialize in something and you know you're, what you're doing, you're going to get more opportunities like this. It's not going to be a one once in a lifetime opportunity that I lost. I'm not winning, I'm not playing the lottery. I know what I'm doing. I come in with experience and I'm coming with, in with drive. All right, guys. That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, yeah, good marks, good out.